Many years ago, a young boy was raised in Georgia, spent an unusual number of hours in his doctor's office. As they tried to pinpoint exactly what was going on with his health condition, it was pretty unusual. Their initial suspects fortunately turned out to be wrong, and a blood smear indicated that instead of childhood leukemia, he was finally diagnosed with infectious mononucleosis. But these trips to the doctor's office made an impression on this young George boy, and the wheels in Bob Gumby's head began to turn. Just maybe he'd like to be a doctor. Today, Dr. Robert T. Gumby, Jr., MD, has been practicing as an obstetrician and gynecologist for over 50 years, establishing his own practice in 1977. I won't read his resume today. That's in the publication that you have at your desk. I really want you to understand why Bob is so deserving of TMA's highest honor. Dr. Gumby has served as the medical director of labor and delivery and the assistant chief of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas, has been a trusted fellow faculty and colleague of mine and a friend for over 20 years. He has also served as the president of the Dallas County Medical Society and the Texas Medical Association. These are clearly notable accomplishments of a natural leader, but his real accolades are not actually what people think of when they reflect on Dr. Gumby. They think about how he always puts his patients first. As many of you have experienced firsthand, Bob is a relentless hard worker, fondly referred to as hyperactive by his beautiful wife, Elizabeth. To date, Dr. Gumby has delivered over 7,000 babies, and rumor has it around Baylor that he's never dropped one. <laughs> he's taught over 200 resident students over the years and shared a wealth of information in the process. When he was a resident physician, he worked alongside uh, an ob that happens to be my next door neighbor, Dr. Neil Green, who may be in the audience today, who described Bob to me one day uh, over the driveway as, my personal image of how a physician ought to look and ought to act. He works closely with patients with a rare perseverance toward their health and well-being. One of our mutual patients at Baylor had complications from a gin surgery, and he invited her to come to his office seven days a week for wound care. In his gentle way, a word you will hear a lot this morning, he took care of her, allowing her the necessary time and attention needed to heal. This daily attentiveness went on for two months with my patient. Why? Because that's what the patient needed. When you get that kind of attention and care from a doctor, you remember it. And when you see that compassion in a colleague, you admire it, and people do. If you've ever dined in public with Bob Gumby, it's quite an experience. You'll know you'll have to allow some extra time. You'll have to allow time for a five-course dinner, and many, many people and admirers that will just randomly come up to the table and tell them how much they love Bob Gumby. Patients and their family members don't hesitate to approach him relating their personal stories and showing their gratitude for his care. It happens over and over again every single time I'm out to dinner with him in Dallas. He never he lets sleep get in the way of him being productive. This became especially clear when he assumed the TMA presidency during its annual convention in Grapevine in May of 2005. Dr. Gumby was a member of the TMA Council on Socioeconomics before that for six years and was chair for two. And a little known TMA trivia fact that many people don't know, Bob actually served as chair of TexPAC and chair of the Council on Socioeconomics at the same time. I know that because I was chair of the Council on Candidate Evaluation Committee and I witnessed firsthand Bob's ability to multitask very complicated issues meeting with insurance carriers to demand fair treatment of physicians, and evaluating and engaging in political races that helped us win major insurance reforms in the legislature. Battling payers and keeping physicians safe in their practices, a passion that protects patient access, has really been a long-term goal of Dr. Gumby, and something that I'm proud of him for doing, and you should be too. Dr. Gumby works hard. But it's important to note that he plays hard too. And when he's not hanging out with his two children and five perfect grandchildren, then you might find him on a ski slope or fighting a shopper for an item at an estate sale. 
Bob is known to frequent estate sales on a regular basis, acquiring medically related paraphernalia or frankly anything that looks interesting to him. He's really the last person on earth that I know that reads the classified ads every day. Ironically, he buys these antiques and collectibles, but as far as I know, or as anyone in his family knows, he never sells them. I don't know if that's true. As a result, he has at least one storage warehouse that we know about, filled to the rafters with his purchases, and Elizabeth has put her foot down over the years and emphasizes that no more room in their house for to buy anything else, but to be honest with you, it hasn't worked. It's not common knowledge, but Bob is also an avid card player, so much so that he even managed to find time during our professional trips like the AMA. As we all know, that occasional AMA meeting might be in a casino. He'll periodically escape those watchful eyes of the mother and duck out of the more mundane sessions, I won't tell you which ones those are, and can be found tutoring others on how to play blackjack, contributing to the delinquency of his colleagues. At our Christmas parties, everyone wants to sit with Bob and Elizabeth. He has been the source of laughter for many of his colleagues. He can both tell a good joke and receive a good joke, and he can do this at any moment of the workday, including moments spiked with stress and emergency. Dr. Gumby is also a man of integrity. Over the years, he's honed his skills of diplomacy, compromise, and negotiations throughout his career. He was really able to refine what he needed to do, and he has accomplished so much without compromising his principles, or what he thought was best for his patients. As his wife says, Bob's quality control is set on high, and with everything he does, he does the very best job he can do. As physicians, we like to joke that we're not always right, but we're never in doubt. Uh, Dr. Gumby does not fall in this category. In fact, when he was faced with an ethical dilemma, he chose to publicly decline a notable state board position. Let me tell you a story. Some of you may recall that when Governor Rick Perry once vetoed the prompt pay legislation that was backed by the Texas Medical Association, and you may not know that, we had to pass it twice. At the same time, in his back pocket, Dr. Gumby had an offer from the governor, that Governor Perry, to have the honor of being appointed the next Texas Commissioner of Health. In light of the veto, this was an author, offer that Dr. Gumby could not accept. And instead of sporting the title of commissioner, he chose rather to sport a, quote, Rick Perry threatened me too, button and bumper sticker on his car. That, my friends, is political courage in our state. Dr. Gumby's compassion for the patient is unmatched. This caring physician has made it his personal mission to provide the very best medical care for each and every patient. Just treat me like your patients, Elizabeth has often said. He's a respectful leader in his field of medicine and his passion is delivering babies. Just like the old fashioned doctors from his small town roots, Dr. Gumby enjoys listening to his patients and building relationships with them. He loves to support pregnant mothers to be as they prepare for one of the most important times in their life. It's an honor to be an integral part of the birth experience, and Dr. Gumby cherishes that. In 1998, he was elected president of the Medical Society in Dallas. During his tenure, he led physicians' response to problems between a large Dallas physician group and a major insurance company, not mine. That issue and the work Dr. Gumby did played a major role in the Texas legislature's ultimate passage of the physician negotiation bill, which was designed to restore fairness in the contracting process and many of you in this room enjoy the benefits of his work today. Dr. Gumby's compassion for the patient came out in full force one memorable evening in Dallas. TMA staff flew from Austin to prepare Dr. Gumby for a press conference at the Dallas County Medical Offices when they were still on Swiss Avenue. As they reviewed the talking points and discussed the sound bites, Dr. Gumby remained calm, cool, and collected, so much so that Steve Levine, the TMA's vice president of our communication had kind of a growing concern. Would this mild-mannered doctor really be able to get a reporter's attention? But when Dr. Gumby stepped in front of the camera, his compassion came through in full force. His voice and face radiated with a vibrant energy. It was obvious that this man cared deeply for the patients he was serving. Mere moments after the interview, Dr. Gumby's disposition reverted back to his calm and quiet nature. Like the captain of a ship, he has the ability to offer calm presence during a storm, yet also a charismatic motivator for others when needed. 
His longtime friends describe him as being among the treasured and respectful, gentle folks in the world. When Dr. Gumby speaks, everyone listens. I'm seeing many people nod today when I read these comments, and I think you'll all agree with me that Dr. Gumby is selfless. He's not in it for the money. In fact, he never talks about money. What's best for the patient always comes first. Anytime he's asked to do something for someone else, he's willing to do it, especially when it comes to serving the uninsured or those less fortunate. He would never want a bill to get in the way of taking care of a patient's need. And at the end of the day, the patients are the most obvious beneficiaries. As is his nature, Dr. Gumby has built relationships with other physicians, hospital staff, secretaries, and housekeepers at Baylor. Over the years, Bob has quietly helped many colleagues through trying times. It's not rare to find that he's loaned money to coworkers for a car or bought groceries for their family. While many people may be this generous, few people are sensitive enough to identify these types of personal needs and take action on them. It's not uncommon for Dr. Gumby to play down his own health in order to take care of the health of his own patients. I recently saw him at a meeting in Dallas. The April weather in Dallas was quite warm, and I happen to know that Bob was wearing a turtleneck sweater. I looked closer, and the turtleneck was hiding a surgical drain coming out the top of the turtleneck sweater. The fact that he was at a county medical society meeting post-op really didn't surprise me. And neither did see him on the phone all night coaching a colleague on a difficult delivery while we were debating uh, Dallas County Medical Society business. I looked up and Bob was gone. No doubt headed to put surgical scrubs on and deliver one more baby into the world. It's not unusual for him to receive phone calls at all hours of the day and night and not just from his patients. When faced with a complicated delivery, OB-GYNs call Dr. Gumby for help. Without hesitation, he makes his way down to Baylor to assist them just like he did that night in the turtleneck. Many a doctor has asked me at Baylor, because I know I'm friends with Bob, what are we going to do when he retires? Who are we going to call? He has always had a willingness to mentor other physicians, physicians like me and countless others in this room. This selfless attitude is evidence that he always invested in the greater pool of patients, of physicians, and the advancement of healthcare. It is my honor to present the TMA Distinguished Service Award to one of the most genuine people I've ever known, to a compassionate, selfless man of integrity, a man who works hard and plays hard, a man who thoroughly enjoys bringing life into the world and life into our profession, and above all, a man who puts his patients first, Dr. Robert Gumby. Thank you so much, Dan. I'm not sure I can talk after that, but I'm going to try. Uh, I want to thank you for presenting me with this award. As I've told many of you before, Dan is one of my true heroes. As, as a young physician 20 years ago, when we worked together at uh, TexPAC and uh, things at the TMA, I recognized him as one of the most intelligent, talented people I'd ever met. And he's proven this as he's risen in TMA leadership. And recently, his meteoric rise in Blue Cross Blue Shield to become the president is at his age. So it's, he's, he's an amazing person, and I, I treasure our friendship. Thank you. I want to introduce my family that uh, came to be with me today. Most of you know Elizabeth. She's put up with me for 49 years. So next year is our 50th wedding anniversary. She told me to tell you that we got married when we were three. So, um, and as, as you also know, she's an intelligent, uh, independent, talented woman in her own rights. Uh, and she's beautiful inside and outside. She tries to keep me grounded. She's not very successful, but she has helped me in nearly every aspect of my life. 
The rest of my family, Catherine, my daughter, and her twins could not be here today because of uh, their 18-year-olds trying to finish up this year in high school and they just couldn't, couldn't get away. Our son Robert and his wife Laura Lee and our three wonderful grandchildren are here, Judson, Ella Grace, and Marshall. I hope you can meet them. They make my life incredibly exciting and enjoyable. <sighs> Sorry. I'm an emotional person, what can I say? Uh, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law are here, Francis and Don Baxter, and their daughter, Marion. Uh, as many of you here in Houston know, Don is a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, foot and ankle specialist here in Houston, and athletes come from all over the world to seek his care to get them back into their professional uh, life. So I appreciate all of you being here. I want to take time to thank Dallas County Medical Society, Michael Derazette and his wonderfully helpful staff, and my Dallas delegation. They have uh, kindly and gently pushed me forward in organized medicine. And I want to thank the Board of Counselors for, for granting this award to me. And I want to thank this House of Delegates for allowing me to serve and giving me repeated votes of confidence to be involved in the TMA leadership. And last but not least, I want to thank the Texas Medical Association, Lou and Martha and all the staff. I, I don't have time to name everybody, but you know that I appreciate you. They've been there at every turn to help advance our profession and to help me personally. You know, when, when they called me down to the lobby when we were in Orlando to tell me that I was going to get this, I was, I was surprised because I didn't, I, I didn't know anything that I'd done that they'd be calling me to the lobby at 9 o'clock at night. And I, I was so surprised. And they said, why are you surprised? You've done so much. And I said, but that was just what everybody does. And I guess I was working under the assumption that uh, Jim Pilcher, my brother-in-law, who was one of my classmates in medical school, once told me, he said, you don't deserve an award for doing what you're supposed to do. So I, I feel that way. But my family has always tried to keep me humble and in line. It started with my dad back when I finished college. I called him one evening and I said, Dad, I just got Dooley's Derby at Emory for for being the outstanding extracurricular senior male. And he said, well, that's great. Now you've gotten everything at Emory but an education. <laughs> so. And just recently, Judson, my grandson, put me in perspective too. Robert told him that uh, I was getting this award and they were coming to Houston to be with me. And he said, why is Papa getting that award? Is he the oldest living doctor? <laughs> so in, in all seriousness, I, I can't express my feelings of how honored I am to receive this award. But I'm not ready to stop. I want to support organized medicine in whatever way I still can. I love all my physician friends here that I've been able to work with in this house. You're an impressive, intelligent, and dedicated group. You're willing to give that extra effort to support your patients and our profession. It's, it's such an honor, as you know, to be a physician and to have that personal relationship with your patients. I have so many very special patients that I will remember forever and remember their stories. This is truly the greatest profession ever. I still feel 20 regardless of how I look, and I'm still having fun every day of my life, so I want to keep practicing as long as I can. 
I want to thank you again for letting me be involved with you in this wonderful organization that has the high ideal of improving the health of all Texans. Thank you so much.